Testing, one, two, three, Does testing. Does I have to talk into your brain? <laughs> testing, one, two, three, testing. Testing. Hello. Testing, one, two, three, <laughs> testing. Hi, how are you? Good morning. Hi. Let's see. Is that cute? What were you going to say? I just, it's so cute what's happening right there. Hi, baby. So cute. Are you enjoying Chris 4-4? Oh, you're saying that her tail is coming. Kind of like talking to me. There's so much love going on over there. <laughs> love is love. Christopher, love. That dog wants to lick those nostrils. She's just like, oh. Oh my he's God. He's excellent. Those are some excellent Hi, baby. Wow, that was a little scary. Okay. What are we talking <clears throat> about today? Hi, everybody. It's Dr. Wendy O'Connor, and this is Stay Open with Miss Jenny. And we are so excited. Are we excited? You're always excited. You wake up excited. Do I, though? I don't know. You seem like it. You think I would, though, right? I do. I would think that you do. do I, you I'd love to be wired like that. To be waking up. Do you think I literally wake up and I go, "Good morning, day," and like start the day? I don't actually like, think you do, but I'd like to think you do. How's that? Really? Because like, the other alternative. These are really pretty, by the way. Thank you. Add moment. Okay, sorry. Um, so <clears throat> I uh, apologize. We have not been recording uh, for a while, just because there's been some things happening and life gets in the way and I've been meaning to continue the YouTube-ish kind of vlogging thing because I know people have been saying they've been enjoying it. Great. Um, so all my 15, our 15 viewers or so are clicks, but um, it's not about the outcome. So that's really interesting, right? Right. Detaching from outcome. Yeah. Tell me more about that because we were doing something and, <clears throat> excuse me, and talking about something and that's what you said you said i'm not what did you say I said i'm detaching from outcome uh detaching from outcome not being too tied to things going one way or another uh can really lighten the load obviously there are times when it's <clears throat> sincerely difficult to detach from outcome you know when it's something really major or important or it feels that way but so much of what we do in everyday life we get or we can get really caught up in the details and yes stressed out about it absolutely when there's no control over it, it really doesn't matter no control makes you crazy oh, let's just take a deep breath i've been breathing more what about you well i try to breathe all day long <laughs> but do you remember day. but do you remember how to breathe uh, I do. I meditate. I try to meditate uh, every day, but you know, it comes out to maybe every other day that I really sit down and do it. But yeah, conscious do, to become more conscious of breathing. But is meditation equivalent to being mindful of breathing, or are you? Breathing throughout the day. Now you're making me, when somebody talks about breathing, as if, uh, like, people who are watching this will probably start to think about it, or when I'm editing, like, uh, the last podcast that we uh, that just posted about Relationship Reveal with Sandra, uh, you mentioned at some point just taking the time to breathe, and listening to it as I'm editing it, I am listening to you <laughs> talk about that, and I'm stopping and breathing and it, it's reflexive when somebody talks about stopping to take a breath that one actually does stop and yes. take a breath. So it's intention, where you put your intention. Yeah, and also the influence that people have on us uh, that's positive, but just kind of look at those little reminders. Just somebody else talking about their relationship will make you think about your relationship or talking about their parent and what they're going through with them will make you think about yours and so somebody just talking about <sighs> stopping to take time take a breath let it out relax just hearing somebody else doing that 
can trigger the same positive behavior in oneself. Yes. It's enough to be, triggers we always think of as triggers as being bad things, but they can also be positive triggers. It's a positive trigger. It's like Pavlov's dog. Stimulus response. Yeah. Salvation yeah. with the meat. Yeah. Oh my God, can we talk about meat? Oh my gosh. Okay. Salivation. All right. So I have a confession. I'm a bad vegan. Well, why do you have to put a label on I'm it? I'm a bad girl. Smack me. Uh-oh, did you just spill your... No. I'm a bad girl. Spank me. Ah, you can really spank me, know, you know. I don't really that kind of a show. You're allowed to spank me. <laughs> I was joking, but, like, you don't have to, like, that was so cute. When I say spank, you can spank. Go. Right, okay. Spank it. To... That's cute. <laughs> All I'm saying is I was bad. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so. I'm not here to sit in judgment on you. Judge me. No. It's okay. Not not for this. What's so what's going on with the with the vegan? So my intention what what is happening? My hair is getting bigger and bigger as we're talking. Do you care? No. It's just like Obviously really. you care. Just. I don't. It just feels like when my hair is curly and out of control, it's triggering an internal out of control. Mm. But like when it's back and controlled. Well maybe it's just free. Can you think of it as just free? Okay. And that out of control? Okay. Because I think it looks pretty. Pretty out of control. <laughs> okay. So I was uh, made a decision, a conscious decision to be vegan. And no meat, no dairy, no salt, oil, or sugar. So doing great. And, you know, it isn't bad or good. It's just like what is happening right now. Yeah. And how it unfolds, as one of my friends says. Mm -hmm. So I decided to totally go vegan. And it's been wonderful. It's been really insightful. And uh, it just feels really, I don't know, like just lovely. But here's the problem. I love me a good steak. Do you like, you don't eat meat. No. You eat fish, I, chicken? No. But, but I do understand that that's a big thing. If you really love it, yeah. It's hard to just never have it again, go cold turkey. I know. So what happened was uh, we had a whole bunch of family celebrations and graduations and birthdays. And my family likes steak dinners. And so, you know, or give barbecues or whatever. And so anyway, at, and... Um, you know, I have a teenager who just loves him some... Hello? Junior? He's just hanging. Oh, okay. He's just Are you chilling bored? out in the other room. That's rude. No, thought we had a little audience for a second. Oh. That's okay. Um, you have an audience. Have but an audience. do we, though? Do they really like and click? Does it matter? And subscribe? Yeah. They will. I need validation. <laughs> I need emotional and physical validation. I don't really, like come. spiritually, but please like and click below and subscribe, right? Like, click, is that the same thing? Like it and subscribe. I guess you're clicking click both, like right? Click and click to subscribe. And, and then you can get that notification, yeah. so you can do three things. Yeah. You can like, you subscribe, can also, and click. Yeah, and you can also click and leave a review, like a positive review, too. Oh my God, they can leave reviews? Maybe. I uh -oh. don't know. It depends on how you have it set up. But. I don't even know. It's just like tossing it to the universe, which is my latest ebook on Amazon. Okay. Toss it to the universe. <laughs> okay. S yeah. <laughs> it's like it's my stay open book. She looks like she's like <laughs> on she's a. She's staying open. Yeah. Oh, she is wide open, sister. Okay. So, anyway, back to the vegan thing. So, anyway, in the past few weeks, I've had pepperoni pizza, I've had steak. I have had chicken, I have had shrimp, and cheese. And can I tell you, it was delicious. However, when I don't have those things, I don't crave those things. It's really interesting what's going on. So, um, yeah, anyway. Uh, That's pretty typical. Is once you eliminate things, your body reconfigures itself right so i'm kind of using technological uh lingo to talk about it but you know you get accustomed to new things and people also say all the time and i know you were talking about this on our podcast with Dwayne that after they cut out sugar they don't really miss it that much right uh 
and I am sure that is the case. And if I ever decide to cut out <laughs> sugar, I will have a um, a more educated view on that. But you that, like that. chocolate? Oh yeah, I like chocolate a lot. And what kind of chocolate? It has to be milk chocolate because dark chocolate uh, triggers migraines oh. for me, and white chocolate is well, it's not chocolate. What do you got against white chocolate? Oh yeah, white chocolate just has no flavor. That is, well, okay. and I like Mexican chocolate. Really? For Mexican hot chocolate, I don't really eat it raw. But yeah. Do you know research shows hot chocolate and mint is good for the teen brain? By the way, because it helps them study and be more motivated. So I'm going to give my teen hot chocolate with mint so that he can have it in the afternoon. That's nice. Well, it's caffeine. It's right. Like chocolate, so. And they say right around 1 o'clock in the afternoon is good to give it to them. But you know what's happening at schools? I'm sorry to go on to a different to tangent. Divert, yes. Yeah? But that's, you're that's with us. me all the time. I, know. I love that. You're with me all the time. I'm, I'm all about the tangents. Right? Yeah. It's about the journey, not the destination. Thank you. Yeah. Jenny, God. <laughs> Do you know what? I hate, I hate to high five. I hate to high five. Really? Yeah. Anytime anybody wants a high five, I'm better at it you because just did it. I know I'm better at it. But I used to like really. I won't high five you because I just felt stupid doing it. Um, but anyway, it doesn't really matter. Who cares? Who cares about it? I don't. Know. I don't know. Did so, somebody like once high five you in the face or something? I mean, right. Like was I traumatized yeah, with a high like, five? Yeah. Or did you just do you look at other people and go, that looks idiotic? No, because they do it with confidence. They're like, what's up? And they, you know, but like, I don't know. I just feel like, okay, I'm high-fiving because society says we should instead of like, I don't want to high-five. You don't have to high-five. I, I, hi I don't really high-five that often. I don't want to high-five. It's okay. I don't like that. I just don't like it. Yeah. You're still a fully formed and worthwhile person. Thank you. You do not have to high-five. Sometimes my clients want to high-five and I'm like, fuck, should I high-five them or should I not? Or should we process it? Is it my issue? Is it theirs? Should I high-five and then process it with my own therapist? Oh, sorry. I forgot we have the microphone for my breast disease. Um, I should say that, right? Because if... Okay, wait. Okay. You can cut it out. I might cut it out. I might not. I don't know. So anyway, what was I saying? Teens. Oh, what's happening with schools, I mean, for years, but anyway, do you know they put vodka in water bottles and drink vodka all day long, starting at 7 a.m.? I find that stunning for anybody, but I also understand that some people, that's unfortunately their maladaptive behavior to function and, you know... Yeah, I'm not judging it. I'm just saying yeah, I, uh, teachers... But it's dangerous with kids. I mean, I think drinking, you know... I mean, I, I don't want to be... Um, I, I mean, I drank socially when I was in high school, which, you know, underage drinking. We do not promote it, but I also understand that it's don't something that happens. Yeah, I mean, we do not condone it whatsoever. We want people to be safe, but... You know, it's also something a uh, rite of passage. Did you drink in high school? What do you mean, like in the school? Yeah. Like no, never. Excuse me. But you know, I, I did. I, we took this little, uh, uh, pilot, you know, travel <laughs> airplane things, yeah. and I don't know where I got them. My mom was an alcoholic, so probably safe bet would be her, because we had a lot of vodka at home. But um, yeah, we had those little things, and we would get schnockered in the girls' bathroom and then um, throw up, and then we'd go to the next period. I know. Yeah, no, I you know, Bad. I've always been more into stimulants like caffeine and nicotine than depressants like alcohol or lewds or anything like that. But, you know, that's not to say that I didn't, I haven't gotten hammered and been out of control in my life. <laughs> a drunken <laughs> whore. <laughs> a bar fly. Were you a bar fly? It's okay if you were. No judgment. Hashtag love. It's okay if you. It's okay if you were. Yeah. No. Uh, I know. I, I no. I mean, I, I've been to bars. Have yeah. you seen that movie, Barfly? It's the best. Well, it's based on uh, Charles Charles Bukowski's book. You you mean the one with uh, Faye Dunaway? Yeah. Oh. And Mickey Rourke is it Mickey Rourke? Is she it? fabulous? Oh my god. Yeah. I love Faye Dunaway. Do you? Mommy dearest. Yeah. Oh, <gasps> yeah. that was my. She's, yeah. Yeah, uh, Mommy Dearest has a very special place in my heart. 
Yes. yes. It was it was one of those movies that was on cable all the time when cable first came oh, out. And so we watched it over and over and over again. Yeah. What is your favorite scene? I will tell you mine. If you didn't see Mommy Dearest, please go see it. Amazing, a bit traumatizing, but it might be familiar for some of you growing up. You'll know what I mean. What was your favorite scene? What was my favorite? Uh, there's just so many wonderful scenes. I, I think... Uh, I, there, I used to do an imitation of her uh, sitting in her, uh, there's a scene where she's sitting in her dressing room and I think a man walks in and her leg is straight up in the air and she's just like, and she's just, she's doing just it like loving this. herself. Mm. Love that yeah, leg. She's like, and I used to do that and it, I don't remember what her line was, but I used to do the line and would make my sister laugh. Uh, but yeah, we used to always uh, quote this the scene where she's saying to Christina, you know, why can't you, you know, why can't you be nicer to me? Every people love me going on and on about how nice everyone and she goes, because we're not one of your fans. I love that. God. Or what the wire hanger. Oh, yeah. Christina. Wire hanger. Christina. Yeah. Why do you defy me? <laughs> oh, God, no. Yeah. Why are angers? Anyway, go see it. Ever. Let's do a movie review. We can start doing movie reviews, too, if we want. You know, and then do the psychological impact of, sure. like, oh, my God. Because why do we like that movie so much? Maybe it's familiar. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah, it's very, Maybe. it's, it's an amazing movie so um extreme oh, God, great. it's very it's very high uh high energy film but i i mean it i mean psychologically it really was familiar mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so yeah. Ah. so i have a question for you sure have you ever had someone on your radar in your life or one or two people that it's really hard to forgive and then you hand it over and you try very hard to pray it away breathe it away just you you try every coping strategy possible to forgive and it's just this little black spot in your heart where it's just like <sighs> You know what I'm saying? Because um, I'm struggling. Well, I have... I feel like maybe we've talked about this before, but um, maybe not uh, Maybe not here. Uh, so forgiveness is a really interesting thing to me, and I talk to people about this because I have some clients who really struggle with forgiveness and want to be forgiving and loving uh, and compassionate, but... Let me get all give? comfy in here. Right. So yes. There's, um, there's a degree to which it is difficult to forgive someone when they have not acknowledged that they've done anything wrong. Fuck that. So I... Sorry, that just flared up because right. yes. So I actually... Makes you feel crazy. Yeah. So I always start from a place of it's okay if you're not ready to forgive. Um, which to some people seems like heresy. Um, and I understand that forgiveness is for us and it's something that you do for yourself. Yeah, I don't want anger in my heart. Yeah. I do not like feel, I don't feel, I don't, I don't like that. I like to be flowing. I almost want to be like, like the Dalai Lama, like, but are we assuming that the Dalai Lama has no anger in his heart? You know what I mean? Right, Like, exactly. it's not possible. We're human beings. I'm sure We're going to have does. some bitches in our path that piss us off. Right. So I think... Uh, I don't mean to say bitches, like, you know, like... I guess I know, you know, I'm talking about my own personal life, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, because we're two therapists, but we're not doing therapy right now. No, we're just hanging out, just talking, talking about our own lives and how it triggers. The personal self. So, right. I mean, we're just human. We have our own... There's bitches in your path. Sure. And that's normal. And, and sometimes I'm the bitch in somebody else's path, right? If you're a priest, a rabbi, or... And we're walking into a bar. <laughs> 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 Sorry, that's because I'm half Catholic, half Jewish. Okay, but if you're really like priests, rabbis, they have anchor in their heart. Of There's course. bitches in their path. Of course. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I, I think that it's a great goal to get to the point where you don't, but I think that if, if you never feel anger, 
oh, or pissed off. You, you may just have reached a level of indifference that might not actually be healthy, mm-hmm. right? You may be so detached from outcome uh, that nothing matters and that you become almost nihilistic. It's like, what the fuck? Who gives a shit? Uh, you know, you know, it's, you know, there's just a, uh, a low energy, uh, I don't know. I don't even want to say acceptance because it's not even that. It's just sort of a like, yeah, whatever. Uh, there's no investment. I think when, when you invest in something, uh-huh. then there's more possibility for anger and being pissed off. So what I find helps me when I get anger, angry or anger, anger's hanging out with me. Uh, or around a relationship uh, with somebody in my life that I can't get away from, Mm -hmm. I just try to adjust my expectation. So it's to me, it's all about... To me... I'm taking notes. Managing anger is about adjusting expectation because usually my anger stems from my having an expectation of them. So let's say... This is not the case, but we were going to meet earlier today. Yes. And you had some stuff come up. Yes. And so we had to shift it around. Yes. Now, if I were, for, for whatever reason, if that made me angry. Yeah. Then it would be, it, I would have to, I'd stop myself and look at that and go like, why does that make me angry? Well, I have an expectation. Maybe I have an expectation that when somebody says they're going to be there at a certain time, da da da. So then I have to adjust my expectation. Is that realistic? Is that kind? Does it really, you know, and say, does it really throw off my day? Da, 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 da. So kind of looking at why am I angry or uh, somebody who's like angry because, you know, they always do that. They always say the same thing and make me feel bad about myself. Right. Right. Absolutes. So then it's like, all right, well, you're also having the expectation that people are going to always know the right things to say. But what if you have no expectations and you still get triggered? Like just something comes up where you get a flare up. I call it a flare up mm-hmm. where, you know, you just, you just, someone pisses you off and then you really are just like taken off your game. And you just like before you just feel that, you know, we call it like that temperature gauge that just kind of like rises. Yeah. And it's just better to not talk, I think. Or is it? Because I'll say some shit I don't want to say. Well, my dear friend Stephanie, uh, she, uh, you would actually love her. She's survived cancer multiple times, Aww, like five was... times. I mean, she's just kick-ass, badass woman. Hey, Steph. Hey, Steph. Peppers. Aww. Uh, and I've known her since we were kids. But one of her man- mantras, and I think it might even be from Marianne Williamson, who I know you yes. are a fan of as well, uh, is... You know, some people are better loved from afar. So I remind myself of that with certain people. And again, adjusting my expectations, knowing that there may be some pushback, but sometimes people who I really love yes. are still difficult to be close to or in a everyday relationship with. So it's just kind of, how do I want to readjust the parameters of this relationship so that it's not so triggering? But when it happens in the moment, yeah, I mean, take a deep breath, walk away, forgive yourself if you lash out, you know, because sometimes that's going to happen too. Yes. And you're going to be taken off guard and like, what the fuck? You know, why but are you being such an asshole? It's so <clears throat> frustrating because, you know, uh, so in my path, there's two people on my radar that I struggle with constantly. They both have the same... Um, I think you know one of them and uh, they both you know tap into um, they're both you know highly narcissistic they're both uh, very detached they both have just they're on my radar where it's really really hard Uh, and I do I work on it all the time to forgive because I teach that right to to be as loving as you can not perfect be be as loving as you can so are there people on your path or on your radar where you just it's a constant challenge to to release them yeah yeah like I see it as black dots on my radar Hmm. yeah I and 
I, there are, but I try to, uh, I try to focus on, because everybody, in that, everybody isn't all, I mean, they're, they're black dot, but it, it, is that all they are? And is that all they are to me? And then I try, if, you know, trying to, like, maybe, uh, like, suddenly I, I don't know if you know the game Othello, the board game Othello, but they're, they have these little circular pieces no, and they're black and white one side is black one side is white right so so ebony and ivory right so maybe i'm looking at the black side and that's the side that i usually get but there's got to be a white side there somewhere right for some people so uh, um and and i'm not, I have black and white dark and light uh, i think is maybe a better uh way of looking at it but just like but where the energy is the lightness but the yeah. energy is so toxic but but, but then here's how sad for them how sad for them that they have to they have to be with that. I don't have to be with that all the time. They have to be with whatever it is that they're. No, playing. I know it's painful, and I get it, and I'm empathetic. Yeah. But obviously, when people are in your path, uh, and you know, you bring unconscious to the conscious, we can link where that comes from, right? Because I know that it's symbolic of someone in my life, and so it brings deep sadness. That that's a, a source of you know a, a wound right that we continue to heal and that can be through therapy it can be through friendship it can be through whatever um but so these two people specifically tap into representing you know somebody yeah, well, that's it too sometimes it's, it's that it, it is what do they represent is it all of them is it that they're sort of a sim symbol of a series of people who behave like that i think about that sometimes yeah, but i think it's them I do. I and think it's I think, them. And then sometimes I think, is that person displaying something that I'm terrified of in myself? I look at that. You know what? It's like condescending. It's like um, uh, very sarcastic. And so for me, um, I grew up with a learning disability and I grew up feeling stupid my whole life, uh, it, you know, uh, with, with academics and learning. And it took me a long, I knew in fourth grade that I had a learning struggle, but I wasn't identified till 28 years old. So it's fine because I became uh, extremely resilient and um, out of all the, you know, painful times in our lives, we are having strengths, you know, like hypervigilant, like, um, you know, very in tune with ourselves. Um, so, and I know that for you too, right? I mean, out of hard situations, we fucking rock it with yeah. resilience. Right. <clears throat> but in one awesome. little statement, it can make you, it, it, you know, it it, uh, it just kind of highlights. They can make you feel stupid in one second, and just tap right in it. Where's your jugular? Where is your jug? Is your jugular? Yeah. Jugular? Where jugular. is it? Like, uh, that's a really good part. I think it's here. Oh, okay. Like Doctor Jenny's in the house now. Don't quote me. You know, but, but it's it like is in the neck. it's like from them, like <laughs> you know, what do they call it? Sicilian necktie. You know, it's like that's how deep it feels where you go right back to you've done so much work in your life and in two seconds it just shoots you in such a heartbreaking thing and you you know what so you lose touch with yourself in a, in, in a way you know I call it being like in the zone you know right. and I know this happens for kids that are in middle school with you know a lot of girls this happens in high school Destabilizing. Uh, it's just and then it can happen in adulthood uh, the good thing is that you, you know you can identify it and keep breathing mm -hmm. and and not react um but you know respond or don't respond yeah the uh, hope is always to respond not react yeah. use your coping strategies yeah yeah well the thing and you're caught off guard too that's the thing you're like ba -ba 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 colombian necktie <laughs> yeah where's my squib uh yeah so what do you do in those circumstances i mean you slap Depends a bitch. <laughs> no, you can't. I'm sorry, baby. Oh, Suki. I woke up the doggy. I'm sorry. We don't advocate violence. Uh, but uh, I just need to show everybody how cute little Suki is because so excited about this conversation. Hi, baby. baby. Um, so, yeah. Uh, forgiveness. One of the one of the most important things about forgiveness to me that I've found that I hold on to is that if I expect to be forgiven, I have to be willing to forgive. And 
also if the anger is motivating and uh, inspires something in you to reflect on yourself or to move closer to the people who don't trigger you, the people who are positive and spending less time with the people who give you bad mojo, then then that's then that's a benefit and it's like okay i mean this is what you always say you know you know i love you when i release you like you know to kind of let it go like thank you for the lesson uh i was i always look at it like that like okay i know a little bit more about myself and what i want and what i don't want and you know they don't have the power to make you feel anything you know so so often people will go oh they made me feel stupid no you know whatever interaction dynamic was there unconsciously subconsciously we i call it swooping and we make it ours instead of de-swooping which is there it is it's not mine swoop there it is <laughs> whoop, there it is whoop there it is whoop there it is whoop there it is Dance break. okay sorry so uh, yeah, <laughs> i'm back but so maybe that's part of a coping skill for, yes. for someone just to, to uh, sing and dance that in your head Distraction. when it happens. Yeah. Yes. And also to focus on what is it that you either value about that person or the connection because even if it's like you have to, oh, right? It's like, hard so sometimes. Let's say so hard. it's a difficult family member um, and everybody has those or and everybody can has those at times, right? Because certainly like let's talk about you know babies weddings funerals illness any high stake situation is going to just a briss right <laughs> is going to augment all of those things so if that's happening you know uh any oh, even be prepared like a bad yeah be prepared yeah okay so it's coping strategies 101 for forgiving someone who is toxic in your path what What are some good coping strategies we can suggest? You already said it. One, distraction. No, I'm sorry. Acknowledge it first. Got to acknowledge it. Like it's happening. Yes. Right? Definitely. So two, distraction. I love that. What else? I would say self-reflection. What is, you know, what is it in this person that is also part of me? Who is that in front of me? It might not be... You know, my uh, friend Betty. Betty is such a fit. Do you even know somebody named Betty? Do they even name kids Betty? That would be cute. Betty White. No, I, I love know. Betty White. Yeah. God bless her. Um, maybe, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> I was just thinking that that would be really cute for a little dog to be named Betty. Betty. Cute. Betty and Veronica. Uh, what, is that a TV show? In the Archie comics. I don't watch it. I don't hear it. I don't see it. <laughs> you yeah, I never read it. Is it a reading thing? Ar- or is it a- yeah, Archie Comics. You know, Archie Andrews and... Never mind. Okay. Zoom! Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so, okay. Wait, stepping away from Betty's, what other coping mechanisms? So, I would look at what is bothering me about this in this moment, and is it... Is there something that they're doing that I'm afraid I do on some level, right? That can sometimes that can be it too, is that we have very big feelings because it's triggering our biggest fears. Like it's a mirror. Like, yeah, we like we Uh fear most in others what we fear in ourselves, right? I can say no for those situations. I don't think it's that. But that's, but it is something to sometimes be open to looking at. You know, like, oh my God, they're so greedy and blah, 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 blah. Well, wait a minute. Maybe that's because I'm afraid I'm greedy. Yeah. Maybe I'm afraid I'm an attention whore. Maybe I'm afraid I'm, you know, irrational or whatever it is. Yeah. So I try to look at it like that. Or maybe I'm just a whore. (laughs) Just kidding. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, I, I so I think okay. that like self reflection, okay. like and managing expectations. Like, what is my expectation here, right? Because you can't really be surprised if somebody is a triggering person in your life. Yes, they continue to do that, yes. and people are like, I can't believe they did or they said I this, know. and it's like, how can you not believe it? We call that denial as therapists. Yeah, I, and. We experience it as well. It's oh my like God. sometimes yes. it's like, okay, again, I had an expectation that this is going to be the time that that person is going to 
you know, call me and thank me, you know, right afterwards or, and I don't have to call them and ask them, did you get it or something like that? Yes. You know, uh, I'm just making shit up here, but you know, trying to, like, like we say, think they're going like, to be like, yeah, why do I think that? And also have I expressed myself clearly with them? Totally. Because here's the thing. You, you can feel a feeling like, okay, I reach out, I give, give, give. How come they don't give? The other person might give in their head and think of you right. and love you and adore you right. and not verbally express that. And yet two people are feeling the same thing. But if you don't speak up, the other person might not know. Well, and you and I have ta talked about this as well, you know, about other things. And it's, it is really about talking to somebody about it. They might have no idea that they're doing it or that what they're doing is affecting you in that way. Yep. And again, back to intention. Don't, assuming somebody else's intention. Speak up, girl. Right. Speak up. You know? Speak up. And it's, it's getting hard. into the shoulds and the supposed tos, right? We get angry when, you, you know, should it sh know. Yeah, they should know and they should be this way. And, you know, you should know how to drive if you're going to be, you know, driving. <laughs> you should know what the rules are, whatever. Uh, but sometimes it's not that cut and dry. And especially when you're talking about how people face the world and personalities, right? Acting as if. Mm. God, sometimes don't you wish you just have that in your back pocket? Like that's what we say, have your tools in your back pocket. I wish that in some situ situations where you're caught off guard, being triggered by someone, that you just you know, I always tell people, not always, but like, you know, when we talk about uh, people that are triggering to you, to be prepared, as prepared as you can. Like, for instance, like family dinners, a lot of times uh, people feel caught off guard with family members or whatever. I tell people, be prepared, have neutral statements like, isn't that nice? Or, huh you know be curious about something keep it really light and simple you know isn't this beautiful weather like just keep it light mm -hmm. you know so that even if you are triggered it's not a big thing because she's having a really beautiful hair day you know focus on the positives act as if so that you really feel strong like kind of like an army you know, uh, is person, you know, and really what like a soldier, soldier. Yes. An army person. I'm sorry. Yes. A soldier that's prepared. Like you wouldn't go into war without a gun and a plan. Right. Yeah. But I think that, you know, just playing devil's advocate here, there's also, there's also just adjusting our point of view, right? Adjusting, recalibrating the lens where not looking at it, like you're going into war. So, you can be prepared, but be prepared to go to the beach instead. That it, assume, like maybe to use the war thing, think they might want to go to war, but I'm going to make sure that we go to the beach, right? So they might try to a ask me about, let's say, you know, I'm 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 unmarried or whatever. Like, why haven't you met the? You know, are you dating? And I may not want to talk about that because we I know where that's going to go. Yeah. So I might that's be good. like prepared, as you're saying, to say like. No, actually, I haven't met anybody yet. How, and then just be prepared with a way to shift the conversation. Keep it going. Go to the, go to the beach. Do you remember? Yeah. Keep it going. <laughs> that way. Exit. That way. Like, yeah, and right. out the door. Right. <laughs> Keep right. it going gonna, uh, that way. The destination is elsewhere, right? Yes. They might want to go. They oh. might want to go to war, and coffee. you can redirect to oh, go to. <laughs> My coffee keeps spilling. What is that in the universe? Redirect Stop the, the caffeine. Yeah. The universe is telling me no more caffeine. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm perfectly fine. So why? I love caffeine. So, so that to me would be another thing, right? And, yes. And being prepared, knowing obviously. I mean, and you can prepare that. Okay. So, like for me, here's just like an example. Uh, I. I'm not really great at staying. At this point in my life, I'm 46 years old. I don't like to stay with family anymore when I travel, like with my parents. I love them. Wait, it took you 46 years? It took you that long? Wait, hold on. I think I felt that feeling at, I don't know, five? You know, I've, all, you know, I've felt that way for a long time, but I think oh. that there's always this, uh, 
expectation and obligation. That Some feeling, people didn't even know they had a choice. Yes, exactly. Exa- and there's that feeling of if I don't, then they're going to feel bad and they're going to take it as a rejection. Yeah. Whereas it's not really a rejection. I, I mean, I get, it is kind of, but not of them. It's a rejection of, I need my, uh, 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 it's a rejection of, the circumstance like boundaries I need, yeah it's a boundary it's i need my space i need uh, room now sure then they can say well you don't have problems staying with your friend this or that you know but i also there are people that i know respect those boundaries and where they're just like yeah do whatever you want there's not an expectation of me to entertain them or them to entertain me but people don't want to hurt someone else's feelings yeah. and that's where it comes into play is so this love. love affair about like guilting you you're not gonna stay at a hotel are you and so people go no instead of yes i am right and and be willing to tolerate their uncomfortable feelings or hurt or sadness i mean if someone's going to decompensate because you share a feeling then that's on them right and and the hope is that after that experience the first time once you stumble through the bad time the next time just fix this right here i'm listening the next time it won't be so um the hope is that the next time it won't be so raw or unusual they will understand because they got through if if you can get through one time where you're not staying with them and it's uncomfortable then the next time they won't have the expectation and it'll be a lot easier and you know it continues to become the new norm and then everybody's kind of cool with it so in forgiveness sounds like that will be our theme for today our forgiveness uh, also setting firm boundaries because you're also taking really good care of yourself yeah and that would make it easier so that you can see the situation clear yeah. And then it makes it even easier to maybe forgive. Yeah, absolutely. Forgive yourself also for not being uh, harsh or punitive because you're setting a healthy boundary for yourself. Well, I think that that's, that can also be, I think that's a really important point, right? Where is the self-forgiveness and the forgiveness? So sometimes you have to forgive yourself for being angry or being pissed off because I think sometimes we put that expectation on ourselves to never be that way. And I think especially when you're a mental health professional, there seems something hypocritical about the fact that you're losing your shit at somebody. Yes. You know, even if it's internally, like, I want to scream at them, but if I scream at them, then I'm really, like, completely turning my back on everything I know and feel to be right quote unquote right you know yeah what what would i say to somebody else do you ever find that people put you kind of in the priest category like you're a therapist you should know do you ever get that thrown in your face you mean i should know what though how to not feel like uh like not lose your shit well i think though and this is something that i've learned from working with you is that that's not our job our job isn't to Stop being fully formed people with emotions. Those those experiences are what help us connect with clients, right? So we may be a little bit further ahead of some of our clients on on certain paths, um, but that doesn't mean that we're not still on that path. It doesn't mean that we're not still taking anger on or sadness on or any of these things right it doesn't mean that it's suddenly we snap our fingers or we we've read all the books and we've done all the work and so therefore we're just we're holier than thou yeah yeah but do it ever has that ever happened where like family members or friends go well that doesn't feel like very therapist like where they mix it, where you're having a personal situation and, and then all of a sudden they throw up the therapist badge for you. Um, actually, I feel like it's, it, I've had the opposite happen in my whole life where it used to be like, you know, well, you're not a fucking therapist. What do you know? And like now it's sort of like they're, they're like, okay, like they be, they'll quiet down a little bit more. Really? Do you know, I have come across a lot of people, whether it's friends or family members or whatever, that my um, either license or educational level, whatever, they will just throw that up as though, which I guess is projecting 
that I guess maybe they've had a desire to get higher education or something as though I think I have, um, you know, that because of my degree or my education, um, that I think I'm better than anyone when I'm not. I'm not, you know, I struggled with a learning disability for so long. I literally was uh, absent from, you know, any academic achievement from zero to 18. I barely graduated high school. And, you know, so it, so the fact that I have a second life where I'm a sponge academically absorbing everything was like the most important thing in my life. So. Uh, it wasn't about a degree it was like I couldn't take enough classes I had to start where you had to learn all over again how to learn like right. I had to learn how to study how to make flashcards like I mean at 28 years old and it was the biggest time in my life so honestly you know it was a blink and like okay so I'm licensed and I also have a PhD and I also converted to Judaism and I also became a life coach and I one of my long-term goals is I'd love to go to law school um, or medical school like I, I can't learn enough but all people just see is you know a, a title or credentials or something like that assuming something and so that's their thing not mine right it is them I mean it is a projection and are you talking about like a sense that you're uppity kind of that they perceive it when they get frustrated that you think that you're smarter than them or they'll pull that card sometimes right because people feel powerless right and i'm not saying i mean i'm sure i go for their jugular in some way too if it's a personal situation and i'm in just deep emotional pain um you know you know how like people hurt each other when they're so angry at mm -hmm. each other and you just I call it going into the zone like you just you say shit you don't mean how often yeah. does that happen well because the and, and it's especially more, if you saw that growing up yeah and the more the, the closer you are to people <laughs> the, the more you love people uh, and the more you allow yourself to be loved the more vulnerable everybody is and the more aware you are of their tender spots and the more aware they are of yours and so there's a vulnerability to love and the risks get higher and so we all get a little more sensitive um you know i have a quote in the kitchen on the blackboard i wrote and i don't know if it makes sense to anybody but me but i was like any kind of love can be used as ammunition but it's mm. still worth the shot uh mm. it was so to my i my my feeling is is that I can make myself vulnerable so I can tell you all my deepest, darkest secrets. And by telling you that, I'm also knowing that if you ever got mad at me, you could turn around and be like, oh, yeah, well, you are just as fat as you think you are. Or you're just as this, as it, you know, you could just come at me with everything that you know are my deepest, darkest fears. Yes. Or, and you do, you know, you are just like your parents when you do X, Y, and Z. And, and tear me apart. So again, it's ammunition. Well, I'm handing you the bullets. I, you know, when I, when I say, you know, I love you and here I am and here, you know, but that is love is trusting mm -hmm. that somebody knows all those things, has all that ammunition and won't use them. Sometimes people don't know the backstory yeah. and will throw up stuff well, that's true. at you, <laughs> yeah. but it taps something in you Yes, and they have no idea. Right. But highly narcissistic-ish people or borderline-ish or some other people who struggle with some mental health issues or pathology or whatever just know where to go even if they don't know the backstory it's just like really like almost psychic it's bizarre like sociopathic mm -hmm. almost yeah yeah absolutely and, that happens yep and so coping skills and strategies again breathe it out people <sighs> breathing preparation uh, meditation yes. chanting whatever it is that uh, uh, crystals as you've all talked about too you know um i know we've said this on podcasts and in other things imagining them as a child right like You're how would you deal with baby <laughs> <laughs> you're a little baby. Yeah. It's nice. You're a little kid. Right. Hi, baby. Yeah. Psh, psh. No, I'm getting I just feel like yeah. I just want to. Just sometimes you just 
Yeah, I mean, it, it really, it's I just... Some coping skills uh, are, are easier at different times. Yeah, and sometimes. you know what I do? I go on Pinterest, and when I have a flare-up of a negative thought about something, specifically maybe some people on my radar, it's just these two situations. But I'm sure it's not just two, but these are highlighted for me because it's symbolic of that person right. in my family. But uh, I go on Pinterest and I find some beautiful quote about patience, mm, about yeah. faith, about forgiveness. So that's a little hint for my people on Twitter or Instagram or you know um, wherever I, I post things is when you see quotes that are thrown up on my social media, it is very personal. I don't just like throw that up just because it's a pretty day and I want to say a nice quote. Like everything I do is very intentional. So along the lines me. with that, yeah, so quotes are, are fantastic. Uh, journaling, right? That's one of my biggest coping mechanisms to get stuff out of my head and onto the page and then, you know, out and gone. Um, conversations with friends or professionals that you trust uh you know there's a i have certain people that i can call and just say i don't i'm not looking for advice i'm not i just need to bitch yes I just you know and i just unload and that's it you know it's i'm not looking to be fixed i just need to unload it and have somebody just be like yeah i hear you just, Isn't that I great? That's all you need. So that's a really important coping strategy, and a, a, that you again have the you come from powerful instead of powerless. So I want to share. I don't want answers. I just want you to listen, uh, or you can share and say, "And I'd like feedback." It's so beautiful what you just said because people don't know they have choices, you know, and so that happens a lot in couples therapy. We're you know, the woman might say, I, I I, need you to show me that you understand. And the husband goes, or the partner goes, I, I do understand. And she goes, but I, you don't. Well, what does that look like to understand? Right. Is that a hug? Is that a kiss? Is yeah. that a high five? Not for me. No high fives for you. For me. Uh, you know, but is it is it validation, verbal validation? I hear you. Or is it coming to answers? Because some people do want answers. Exactly. And typically, male and female communication can be different, right? Men typically like to fix problems and women like to process. Mm -hmm. That could be a generalization. It is, but, um, it, but it's accurate. It's, it's accurate generalization. <laughs> yeah, except for gay men love to process too and yeah, fix, yeah. which is lovely. That's why we love our gay men. We love them, right? Don't we? Yes, it's just, I, I, am, get you. I am a gay man inside. Oh my God, I'm a black woman inside. There you go. I know, isn't it beautiful? <laughs> it's like, what do you feel inside? And you know, what age do you feel inside? Because I was thinking the other day, like, I feel 35. Hmm. And why is because that was a really empowering time in my life. And I don't know. Uh, it's interesting. My dad's 85, but he feels 48 inside. Interesting. I know. I don't think of it in terms of, of an age. I have a magnet on my fridge that my friend Heather gave me that says, you know, how old would you, it's like, how old would you be if you didn't know how old you are? Yeah. Uh and I love it, but I don't really have an answer for that question because I don't think in, I think numbers are so irrelevant. I've always had friends that were, I always was friends with older people. I was raised to, uh, to mingle with adults. Uh, so there was a But lot did you have things. a stage in your life that felt really strong and I've, alive and. Now, I, I guess, I mean, I, oh. I, I yeah, and so. I, I hear you what you're saying and, and I have heard other people talk about that as well and I certainly don't feel like I felt at 16 I don't feel like I felt at 25 I don't feel like I felt at 35 um, so I, but again I don't I don't associate anything with any uh, any number like when I was growing up I was again I was socialized to be able to deal with adults most of the time so they used to call me like the 32 year old midget. Right, so I was a 32-year-old midget until uh, to the point I'm 32, and then it's like, okay, now what? You know, what? Mm -hmm. I, I don't. What does this mean? Uh, what does that mean? I I don't know. You know, because I know people who are in their 80s who 
are very youthful and and think and feel and act like they're in their 20s uh -huh. and and uh, I know people who are in their 20s who <laughs> move and feel and act like they're in their 80s totally right so, so you're more of the power of now kind of a thing I like guess. right I don't think now of it like that but yeah I, I, I love that book the power of now awesome I also I like that book. um I also tend to round up because my birthday's later in the year so even though I am 46 yeah I'm more likely to say I'm 47 and think of myself as that oh my god age. I round up too because I don't really care about age yeah it's a number so exactly. I don't really care I don't care I don't I'm care I'm also like damn I make this look good yes like, like people say you're 46 yeah and I'm like yeah Yes. Sometimes I feel it and sometimes I don't. And you know, every year, not should be, but like I think is a blessing and a beautiful big thing. So you know how like they go, next year is the big year. You know, like every year is a big year, but I also always say happy birthday to my mom because she pushed me out on that day. And it's like, it's not just about me, it's a shared experience, mm, you know? And so I always, always say, you know, mom, this is your birthday too. Like this is, we are the only two that had a shared experience on that moment, in that day, on that, in that day, on that moment, you know? And on that day, in that moment. Yeah. And um, only, only we know that only experience. It's kind of like when I work with people who are adopted and there is a unspoken nonverbal uh, feeling that happens between the birth mother and the baby. And so people can get adopted and beautiful in the most loving, incredible ways. And adoption doesn't even have to be a, you know, a, an abandonment rejection thing. I've had a lot of wonderful people that are adopted that are flowing in life and it's not even an issue. But the most beautiful unconscious part of it that we bring consciousness to is what must that have been like between the birth parent and the baby in utero and then bringing them into life it's a shared moment that only those two it's a very profound spiritual thing i don't know i think it's kind of cool it is i so you're talking about it as uh, like it's our day it's not just your birthday it's our day it's also the day that for you, how you're describing it, uh, celebrates that connection between you and the person who brought you into this world. Well, so here's the thing. It really is a day that my mother brought, that, that my mom brought this incredibly fabulous, energetic, lovely, healing, nurturing person into this world. Mm-hmm. All the, she birthed all this potential. Hi, Mom. No. I mean, I'm just kidding. But I'm saying, like, it's a really magical moment from utero, from the minute of conception, all the way from mommy, baby, in utero, into pushing you out into this world. Do you ever think about that with your own? No. Mom? No. Does that make you think of it? Or do you don't want to think of it? I, uh, I, I, neither of those are, I, I mean, I, I've, I've never thought about it like that. I mean, my mother will talk about it and, you know, it, I, I was, I, I wasn't conscious, conscious at that moment. I mean, you're born aware, but not necessarily conscious. Conscious meaning that you're taking in what's happening and you're able to, hold on to it and process it and put it in some sort of a place so that that moment in retrospect i i totally understand everything that you're saying and i'm like oh that's a really interesting way of looking at it now i will think about what do i think about that but uh at the moment it's happening uh, it's really more the parents experience i mean the babies and not that the baby's not experiencing something yes they are but it's they don't have anything else to compare it to. It's like, holy shit, what the fuck is this? Suddenly it's so fucking bright. Yeah, uh, yeah and yeah, that it's... in itself I talk to, and this is another talk we can have, but like the trauma yeah. of both baby and mommy. Like, I'm not ready, yeah. You know, pushing out, and like you said, from darkness to lightness. Mm -hmm. That's a whole other talk. Let's talk about that sometime. Yeah, sure. It's so interesting. So we've covered a lot right now. We did. We? Yeah, we, we did. We did, and um, I think the power of now 
Power of now. Power is of also forgiveness. Power of forgiveness. Yeah. So um, do you have any other tricks up your sleeve, your short sleeve? My short sleeve. Of any other forgiveness techniques before we wrap this up? Really, I think... I say candles, I say prayers, I say a priest, a rabbi, a Buddhist thought, um, nature, yeah. mindfulness techniques. Exercise to get... Oh, you know, yes. To get outside your mind and into your body. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to see yourself in the other person. It's very Buddhist, right? Like, that we're all one. Whereas, where am I in this? And also accepting that you don't... Or, acknowledge and accept that you have choices right that you don't yep. have to many times I mean sometimes it's difficult if it's like your boss or something like that but you know you you have a choice in these circumstances yes. and how much time and you, it's also okay sometimes even if that person's gonna have a freaking meltdown to say I'm really feeling triggered right now and this is not what I want our relationship oh, to be about yes. or I don't want our time to be about this yes. moment yes and so can we either reboot or can we get back to this in five minutes or you sometimes know, you don't have those words but that's beautiful but that's the beach bag oh right it's God. a preparation yes beach bag i've never heard i've heard suitcase i've heard tool shed but I've i was heard just you know tools. i was thinking beach bag because you know versus that. going to the war yes. going i'm gonna go to the beach instead like i love that you know, just trying Yes. Whatever it is, amusement park or however you want to. You could take a beach ball, you could blow it up and bounce it on their head <laughs> from love. <laughs> I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I love it. Yeah. So as we wrap up today, uh, I also, yeah, um, just think that it's such a blessing that we do this because honestly, I get a lot of feedback that say that these conversations on our YouTube really helps and I love that we are starting to do them together. So yeah. let's do more of this. Sure, yeah, absolutely. And we could probably take some of this and uh, turn it into podcasts. Too. Totally, yes. Yeah. All right, guys, so this is Dr. Wendy. And this is Miss Jenny. And it's from The Relationship Show, also on what, iTunes? We're on iTunes, we're on Podbean, we're on Google Play Music. That's where we are right now. Great, and you can find Miss Jenny. I am at JennyJVWilson.com, and I'm on Twitter at, what am I, at JennyJVWilson, and I'm on Instagram at The Preppy Rebel. All right. And Facebook. We're both on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. We will see you next time. Like, subscribe, and let us know the topics you guys want to talk about. Thank you, and stay open. Bye. Bye.